Amen. All right. We praise God this evening. Bless you, Pastor Michelle. Hallelujah. It will be coming on the screen pretty soon. All right. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, Pastor Michelle. God bless you. All right. There we go. Amen. Praise our God on tonight. Hallelujah. Good evening, everybody. And I see that they are joining. Uh, I want you to, if you will, this evening, I want you to invite everyone that you know uh, that is um, suffering from any sort of grief at all. Uh, grief comes through loss, uh, a death. Death is a, uh, it's just a separation. So whether it is a physical death of a person, whether it is the death of a job or a, a relationship, uh, whether it is uh, the inability to function physically or mentally as you were able to before. Uh, many times, most, if not all of us, have suffered some sort of grief. And so this evening, uh, we have a wonderful, wonderful uh, woman of God, and I want to preface it with that. She's just that. She's a woman of God. However, she is a licensed therapist, and she knows her stuff. And we're going to have Dr. Gail Rogers coming with us this evening to be able to share regarding grief. Now, we're entering into the holiday seasons, and so, so many are going to have uh, empty places at their tables, and our loved ones are not going to be present. And so we just want to know how to deal with it. Maybe we can't work like we used to work and buy Christmas gifts for everybody in the world. We can no longer do that. And so when those things happen, it affects us mentally. It affects us emotionally. And so tonight we want to get a head start on what's getting ready to happen. And we just believe God that with the help of Dr. Gale, things, life is going to be put into perspective. We care about you. Dr. Gail is the author of uh, the book, The Whole Soul. I believe many of you at Mountains Hope have that book and the rest of you, if you don't have it, you need to get it. The Whole Soul. I believe you can get it on Amazon, but we'll have a, a, a direct link on our website where we can order it directly through Dr. Gale if necessary. So I'm going to, uh, Dr. Gale is going to come on. I'm going to pray and I just wanna uh, to set the atmosphere and I want you to be prepared and ready for what God desires to do. You know, he with this whole soul, God wants our whole soul healed. Our mind, our will, our emotions, our physical being, our spirit man, who can heal a wounded spirit? Sometimes it's a relationship where uh, someone has stepped out of the relationship and it brings a lot of hardship and a lot of heartache. Tonight, we're going to deal with a lot of those issues. Uh, we invite each of you to tune in, ask questions. We want you, you can type it in right in Facebook, and we want you to ask those questions. Nothing's too big, nothing's too small. No question is a stupid question or a silly question. We want you to ask because tonight we want you to get answers. I have the highest confidence in this woman of God. Yes, she's a friend of mine, and she counsels many from apostles to lay members, to uh, 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 teenagers and women and men and couples, and she does it all. And I admire her and I appreciate God for who she is. So I'm going to pray and then we're going to bring on Dr. Gail Rogers. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you that we have your heart for your sons and daughters. 
And you said, God, you comfort those that mourn in Zion. You give us beauty for ashes and the oil of joy for mourning. On tonight, oh God, we thank you for your truth being revealed and your comfort that shall be our portion. Oh God, we are on different levels and coming from different walks of life and are grieving in many different ways, but you're the God who knows all. You are uh, omnipotent, omniscient, and omnipresent. You are the omniscient one who knows all. So tonight, spirit of the living God, you search the deep things of God and reveal it unto us. Tonight, reveal your heart, reveal your plan, even through your servant. And Father, we ask that you be glorified in this process. We bless your sons and daughters, and we give you glory. We thank you for comfort on the line. No one shall be overtaken in grief, but healing shall take place. We give you glory. We give you honor. We give you all the praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on and thank the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. We praise him. We praise him. We praise him. All right. Praise God. Dr. Gail is going to join us. Uh, she will be right on screen. Hallelujah. In just a moment. There she is. Hallelujah. God bless you, Dr. Gail. Thank you. Blessings to all of you. I always get so, so excited whenever you ask me to participate. I, I felt for many, many years, Apostle Cynthia, that I was part of the team. Yes. And, and so I always get excited. You know, um, this is a very, very appropriate topic uh, right now. I was just reading uh, that there have been 727,000 COVID deaths in the United States alone just in the last year and a half. And that's a big number that, you know, so, so when we start talking about grief, um, we're literally talking about global grief. We're not just talking about, you know, uh, my brother just passed away or my cousin or my aunt or my husband or whomever. Right now we're talking global grief. That's and amazing. so, you know, we're talking about something, wow, that's hovering over the universe. Yes. Literally, that's hovering over the universe. I want to start out, I want to share a story. I, when you were praying, I wrote something down about grief and growth. Mm. And I was reminded 18 years ago, my oldest daughter was giving birth. And, uh, and she almost died in the hospital. Uh, you know, the doctors came and said that, that all of her uh, internal organs, everything uh, was, was shutting down. And I remember being in the surgical waiting room and I was praying. And uh, as I was praying, I, I, I didn't quite know what to pray. I, you know, we pray, God, your will, you know, God, let her live, you know, but this is what I said. I said, God, I said, wow. I said, this is probably the hardest test that I will ever have. And the Lord said to me, then you won't grow any further. And I thought, oh, oh, okay, wait a minute, I, wait. <laughs> And, and what I realized is that um, because there was that period of, oh, my God, what will we do if she dies or whatever? And what I realized is that grief even has a potential or a component of growth, if you will, uh, that, you know, we go through all of the things. And, you know, let me give you a sort of a definition uh, about grief, that it can be sadness, loneliness, fear, anxiety, resentment, even anger. You know, we can get mad 
uh, you know, when we lose someone, whether we lose them to death, whether we lose a relationship, the friendship is over and, and you know, we can get mad at God, we can get, and isn't that funny, we think we can't get mad at God, but you know, we, we can, we may not ever admit it out loud, um, but it definitely is something. Grief can also lead to, and Apostle, you and I talked about this briefly, physical issues. Some of the physical symptoms are weakness, trouble breathing, restlessness, uh, inability to sleep. It also can change our immune system. So, you know, what that means is that if, 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 if we got a lot of stuff going on, and, and I'm probably going to share a couple of personal stories uh, of my own grief and, and things that's happened in my life, uh, but it causes sickness in our spirit, prolonged grief. And we just had in the mental health field uh, just about a year ago, uh, they came out with the new DSM manual five uh, diagnostic and statistical manual for mental illness. Guess what? Grief can lead to a mental health issue. In the, in the DSM manual, it's called prolonged grief disorder. I know people that are still grieving someone that passed away 20, 25 years ago. And one of the things, and feel free, Apostle, if you want to cut in at any point, one of the things that I realized, and you know what, we have a tendency, we, us Christians have a tendency say, to say things like, well, you just need to get over that. Right. You know, you just need to pray, you know, uh, ask Holy Spirit to, to help you get over it. And we expect people to be okay in three weeks, uh, you know, a month. And, oh, my goodness, and then we might give them three months. But everyone is different in terms of the way that they respond to grief. And I was looking at the book that you recommended um, called Good Grief and, and saw that there are 10 stages of grief. And if we don't process properly, I remember my mom passed away 29 years ago, might be longer than that, but I remember that I was desperately trying so hard to be strong for the grandchildren to, to, you know, and I said to the Lord, I said, God, I said, help me. My mom was my best friend. And I said, you know, Lord, don't, don't let me break down, you know, give me the strength to be strong for them. And he did. And, and, but I didn't grieve for a whole year. And then all of a sudden, one day I found that I was angry, that I was agitated. Uh, you know, there was a lot of things that were going on with me. And, uh, and finally, someone said to me, you're just grieving your mom. And I thought, well, what, what was going on during that 12 month period that I didn't grieve? And, uh, and so what I realized is that grief has its stages. And, and uh, for those of you that are listening, if you're, and, and I, I know that many of you have lost uh, people due to COVID, have, have people have lost their jobs, as Apostle was saying. Uh, people have lost relationships. The, you know, the, <laughs> the biggest relationship buster that I'm seeing today is vaccinated versus non-vaccinated. You know, I mean, folks are literally uh, off the chain and, it's and it's by design. It, it, you know, see, if we could realize that, that it thing, everything that happens to us, there's a reason and everything is by design. Now, we may not always follow God's design. We may veer off, especially when the enemy begins to talk to us. And just imagine, because grief really does cause depression. Yeah. And you were, uh, when you, you were talking about the loss of a job, and I'm reminded 
that um, my husband was injured in 1989. He broke his back in an automobile accident. And I didn't even know depression yet. I was just studying. I think I was working on my master's degree then and I had taken a few courses and was understanding depression. And um, several months went by and finally, you know, he was different. He had changed. And finally I realized, I said, you know, I said, you, you're depressed. And he laughed at me. He, he said, yeah, right. You had three or four courses in psychology and now you want to psychoanalyze me. And, but I was seeing it. Uh, you know, it's, depression is tangible. It's, it, we can see it on a person's face. We can feel it in their presence, you know, I mean, it's, it's tangible. Can't you feel that you, you ever been in the presence of someone and you just felt the darkness? You can feel the darkness, you can feel the heaviness. And if you're really sensitive to the spirit, you'll catch it all the time, whatever environment you, you're in. Tell us, Dr. Gale, what does depression look like? What does it look like? What are the signs of depression? I'm going to tell you also it has a smell. Okay. It, it, it has a smell. Depression manifests, and, and many, many people don't understand that they're depressed. Um, you know, it's funny. It almost, I've, I've worked around it for so long now that a person can walk in the room and they can say a few words and I go, ooh. You know, that, that energy, that vibration. Depression looks sad, despite the fact that there is a big smile on your face. You can look in someone's eyes and, and, and see that there is something there. Um, the person is um, aloof. It's like they put this wall up and, and really they may not even realize because many times I say to clients that you're suffering from depression and they go, no, I'm not. Well, then I'm not going to be able to help you. If, because, you know, if, if I'm seeing it and I'm trying to, um, trying to get you to see it so we can deal with it, it, um, it, 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 uh, it, it manifests in agitation, in anxiety. And we won't even, I don't think we will get into this uh, tonight, post-traumatic stress disorder, which we're seeing more today than ever before. And so you don't want to be bothered. It's you isolate. Uh, you know, many times you may stay in bed all day. And then there's something uh, that's called sundowning. Uh, and, and, and sundowning is near the evening when it gets to be about four or 5 p.m., people that are depressed automatically just shut down. It, it's, a, it's a darkness. You know, depression, despite the fact that it is a chemical imbalance taking place in the brain, it's also a spirit. And unfortunately, what happens in the church is that we love to cast out spirits. Right. And the issue is we can't always cast out a chemical imbalance. Right. It has to be treated. I'm right. not sure why we feel we can treat physical illnesses. We can treat high blood pressure. We can treat diabetes. Uh, we can treat cancer. But, but when it comes to the church and depression, we don't want to treat depression. We just want to cast it out. Yeah, yeah. Can Dr. Gale, can depression be either or? Can it be a spiritual uh, state? And then, or could it just be a, a, a physical state? So meaning, can it be a spirit that can be cast out? Or is it just um, uh, something that I'm going through at the moment, something psychological? maybe the loss of a job, the loss of a loved one? Could it just be something that I'm experiencing right now 
And it's just a seasonal thing versus a spiritual thing. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, um, and, and I may have said this on one of our other panels that um, when I discovered that my husband had dementia, I didn't know what to do. Yeah. I, 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 wasn't, I wasn't experienced as a caregiver. I wasn't experienced, um, really don't think that I had spent a lot of time with, in the company of anybody. But I remember Apostle sitting in front of the TV, night after night, just sitting there looking and crying. The weather would come on and I would be crying. Mm. And probably three weeks into that one night, I kept thinking, what is wrong with you? Because I'd never been depressed before. Yeah. What is going on? And finally it dawned on me, okay, I know what this is. This is depression. So for me, it's like snap out of it. Okay. But it's also calling someone like yourself and saying, I just need you to pray with me. Yes. I just need to, I need someone to talk me through this. Yeah. Now, everybody can't, you can't talk everybody through it. Um, some people have it more from a spiritual perspective. Other uh -huh. people have it more from a physical perspective. And so yeah. I think it's all of the above. Yeah. I think we have to be discerning enough to say, I get it. Because see, we can also um, cast people aside. That's oh, true. No. Oh, you, they've been depressed way too long. I just, I can't deal with that. I just don't want that. I don't want that in my space. Yeah. You know, I don't want that in my That's space. That's true. And they can't help themselves. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So um, yeah. It, it can be both. I think that we have to be discerning enough to say, cause you know, when you prayed for me and we had a discussion about where I was, um, I was agitated. I was angry. My whole life had turned upside down. And, and over the years, you know, various circumstances or whatever, you know, we like to think that we are just, we are such super spiritual people that nothing bothers us. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And yet, if you consider the whole world today is in chaos, right? The whole world is confused. There's just stuff going on. If you consider that, that's a spirit that's hovering. Now, yes. we have to be able, you know, that scripture, and I don't have it in front of me. I think it's in Proverbs that, that, um, talks about the broken spirit drying up the bones. Right, absolutely. Okay. And it is. A merry it heart. Is. It's in Proverbs. Mer a merry heart does the body good. Uh-huh. A broken spirit dries up the bones. Well, when I studied that several years back, drying up of the bones is deep into the bone marrow. The bone marrow uh -huh. is where we get our red blood cells and it's where you know life so now we're talking about a broken spirit yes passion woundedness trauma all of that that has dried up the marrow the very life the very life in my body the blood yeah. that yeah. circulates through my body wow that is so true. I just posted that script. Did it, did it post? Did I post that? I thought I posted it. Probably yes, 17, posted twice. It's posted. It is posted. Okay. All right. I don't, for some reason, I don't see it on my screen, but my screen does a whole lot of stuff anyway. So praise God. Verse 26 or 27? 1722. 1722. And then there's the other one. And I'll have to look that one up that, that says, who can, who can heal a wounded spirit? Yeah. So it really takes the power of God for a wounded spirit to get healed. You have to wonder, I mean, we can go all over the place. So I'm going to have to control myself and not go to Ezekiel in the Valley of the Dry Bones. So, oh, I know. That's where I was going. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Because see, I, I preached that a long time ago and I agree. Um, it was a lot going on, but 
for just a moment, I want us to, to uh, introduce Brenda. Minister Brenda Cresswell, she's on the line. Brenda, hello. Turn your camera on, turn your mic on. She's not accustomed to doing this either and she's coming while she's coming. There she is. <laughs> Hi, Brenda, turn your mic on. Praise the Lord. Brenda is here and uh, her family is also on the line and they're on. Can you figure out how to turn your mic on? I'll let you keep working at it. Uh, her family, many of her family members are on the line as well. And uh, I shared with Dr. Gale, and some of you know, and some of you may not know, that within about, if I remember correctly, about a two month span, uh, Brenda's lost her brother-in-law. And, 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 and listen, just so that we get rid of the religious spirit, we understand when we know they're in heaven, they're not lost. But for the sake of conversation, can we just say that tonight? So you don't have to keep going like, she said lost it, okay? All right, so she lost her brother-in-law and within the next two weeks or so, her sister, her brother-in-law's wife, Brenda's sister, and then within another two to three weeks, her niece. And so I've asked Brenda to come on. She's representing her family, uh, the sister who lost her daughter, Linda, she's here. And then also, the, uh, do the her niece, Brenda's niece, she's there with Brenda, who lost both her mother and father. She's listening in and all of the other, this, this is a lot, this is a big family. They're all listening in on tonight. And we want each of you to feel free to ask questions, uh, just type it in. But Brenda is going to ask some of the questions on your behalf. I know that you all have given her some, we want to do everything that we can to help you through this season. You've just heard Dr. Gail say it, you know, we can't, well, I don't want to say we can't bring that healing because through the power of the Holy Ghost, mm -hmm. that healing will come forth. And I just got through teaching on the gifts of healing. And I believe Dr. Gail has that gift, whether it's physical healing or emotional healing, spiritual healing, she too has that gift to release the right word so that you can be healed and you can be strengthened. We also understand that healing, and hear me, when we go through grief, she said that people just say, get over it. Some healings are a process. Mm -hmm. Some are instantaneous, but some take a process. And so through this tonight, we want you to understand it's okay to go through the process. And we want this to help you. This session is to help you through the process. So Brenda, if you have questions from your family or any questions you've heard, Dr. Gail, even as she began to share, if you have questions, we want you to ask those questions. And through the power of Holy Ghost, as he reveals it unto us, we'll be able to share with you and the family and everyone else listening on tonight. Thank you, Apostle, and thank you, Dr. Gail. Um, yes, as uh, Apostle has said, I've lost a lot of family members within a three month span. And so our family, some of our family members are not as strong as the others, but um, some of the questions that they had given to us um, or to me was, they wanted to know how do we support those members in our family um, who are grieving. And I know some of them are feeling depressed. Um, they don't know how to you know, deal with losing someone that was very, very close to them. Um, so you know, those are some of the, um, the things that, that our family is dealing with, some of our um, uh, like my niece and my sister. Um, I know for my sister, um, she was a caregiver for her daughter, um, you know, for a few years. So, and that was her only child. And her um, 
passing was all of a sudden, no one expected it. Um, she had a heart attack. She was only about 48, 49, I believe. Um, so my sister was asking, you know, what can she do, you know, to make things easier for her in the loss of her daughter? Isn't it interesting? That's a great question, uh, Brenda. I, um, I, I, first and foremost, I think that we have to take each individual according to their personality. Uh, you know, some people we, we can actually pray with, we can give them scripture, we can say, you know, God's got this. And, and that's okay, you know, they, they can say, yeah, that, and, be, and be very encouraged. Um, others, it requires a little bit more. Um, one of the things that I understand about grieving is that uh, oftentimes there is a wall that goes up because the person doesn't even think that anybody else understands. So they put this wall up um, you know, it, it's like they put this wall up between them and the entire world. And, 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 and you know what happens when you put a wall up um, is that you don't trust anybody anymore. I'm not sure, you know, we've often talked about um, sudden death versus a, pro, a prolonged illness and expecting somebody to die. Um, I'm not sure one may be easier for one person and much, much harder for the other person. But I think that just loving them, loving on them, being there, not forcing ourselves on them. You know, we have a tendency to go in the room and, and pull the blinds open and, you know, spray the room and say, get up, you know, it's time to move on. Some people can't move on right then. And some people we have to just stand back and allow them to process, particularly if a person is a, an emotional processor anyway. You know, cause see, they gotta go through some stages. They, they've got to even be able to identify for themselves. What is this I'm feeling? You know, how, 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 do, how in the world do I even think about living life without my daughter? How, how do I do that? And my daughter and I have this conversation all the time. And, and what I've attempted to do, and I don't necessarily know whether we could do this or not. It did, it, really, we probably should do another session just on preparation for death. Uh, because see, one of the things that we don't realize we live here on this earth and we function on this earth as opposed to functioning up here in the heavenly places. And so, you know, we are most definitely assaulted by the spirit of death. And, and, and yet one of the things that we know, and I hope I'm answering your question, uh, one of the, the things that we know is that death is inevitable whether it's at two years old or 20 years old or 50 years old, we have a tendency to think that it ain't happening until we get 80 or 90. And so when it does happen, we're just knocked off our, our chair. You know, we, we, we don't know what to do. In my mind, I believe more than anything else is understanding, compassion, love, and showing some mercy and, and, and giving them that opportunity. Now, when we see them going, and we have to know the difference, <coughs> excuse me, we have to know the difference in the grieving process and when it turns into depression. So when we see them going into that direction and, and, and then we can tell that, oh my goodness, there's some depression setting in. Let me share something with you, Apostle. You mentioned it earlier about a wounded spirit. Um, the word wound gets its, it's derived from trauma. 
And we don't understand death brings about trauma. It's got to be dealt with. And, and when I say dealt with, I mean, we've got to talk about it. You know, we need to, so with your, your sister, uh, I just believe that it's engaging them in conversation. It's talking about the good times. You know, I just lost my aunt. It's it really interesting. She had a massive stroke last week and I knew she was gonna die. And they were praying for healing. She's 84. And this morning, four o'clock this morning, I was praying for her. And I said to the Lord, I said, God, now, now my cousin said to me, I'm praying that God completely heal her. She had Alzheimer's as well. I said, God, I said, please take her quickly. Don't allow her to suffer. Don't allow the family to suffer. And, and they texted me around nine o'clock this morning and said she passed away at seven this morning. I know God honored that prayer. Now, the thing that, that I recognize is that all of these different stages that we have to go through, that what I realize is that I don't, I don't want uh, to act like uh, grieving should be something that we do quickly and then it's over. It, you know, we've got to, we've got to just spend some time with them and, 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 and understand where they are. Right. Ask them where they are. Right. You know, we don't like to talk. Uh, we don't like to get deep, but ask them, what are you feeling right now? You know, what's going on in your heart? What's going on in your mind? And let them say, you know, many people will say, I just feel depressed. I just feel empty. I just feel lost. They can tell you how to respond to them just by telling you what they're feeling. It's true. Does that help a little bit? Yeah. You know, Dr. Gail, that is so true. Uh, one of the things that often comes to mind for me is that, um, first of all, you have to give yourself the grace to grieve. That's to know good. that it's okay. It's okay. As you look at the, the various steps of grief, um, you'll see, as she mentioned, anger. And sometimes it is sadness. And sometimes it's still unbelief. You're still trying to figure this whole thing out. And you've got to give yourself the grace, one, to know that you're not losing your mind. You're not going crazy. You're going to get through this. It's going to be okay but give yourself the grace and then give the other people the grace. Don't ever feel like someone should grieve like you grieve. Now we have those that need people to check on them all the time. Some people need you to say, how you doing? You okay? Just wanna make sure everything's okay. How you feeling today, tomorrow? How are you just checking on you? Some people just like, leave me alone. Just leave me alone. I'm a leave me alone person. I'll mm -hmm. get it. I'll just leave me alone. Mm -hmm. But we're all different. So you've got to also, as you give that person the grace, you've got to know uh, who they are. You've got to know their personality. Okay. Some you can leave alone for a minute and they'll get it. But some, if you leave them alone too long, they'll spiral into that depression. So you've got to know how to, I love Dr. Gail saying this, engage them in conversation. Mm -hmm. And it's okay to engage them. We need to be able to identify how we feel. I can identify how I feel. I am in tune with myself. Mm -hmm. So I know, and this is what she was saying earlier. I know me, you got to know you. So you've got to know and recognize when you've gone into depression, you've got to recognize that something's not right here. So you've got to recognize how deep do I go in grief before it takes me into depression. And you've got to declare, I'm not going to go into the depression, but I'm going to deal with this grief. And if I do go into depression, let me get somebody to help me. As Dr. Gale was talking, I was uh, uh, just taking some notes on some of the questions that came up because engaging in conversation is so very important. Sometimes people need uh, each other. So sometimes they need you to say, hey, let's go to dinner. Hey, let's 
you know, let's, uh, let's take a walk. I'm going to pick you up and take you to lunch. You know, some people mm -hmm. might just want to go shopping. Some people don't want to deal with shopping. Some people might need to play a game. Let's go play some basketball. Everybody's different. So you've got to know who you are dealing with and deal with them accordingly. And it takes time. Grief is a process. We want to take time. I know uh, uh, someone very dear to me who had uh, a husband to pass. It's been well over 40 years now. And about 10 years ago, at about the 30 year mark that he had died, we found articles of his death. We found the obituary stuck in a chair and she had been sitting in this chair grieving for well over 30 years. Now you must be careful because if we don't grieve properly, and Dr. Gail said this, if we don't grieve properly, we'll turn to alcohol, we'll turn to drugs, we'll turn to other means to help us feel better. And then when we come down off of that high, we still got to deal with the grief. So we must deal with grief properly. If we don't deal with it properly, it can be prolonged. And so Dr. Gail, I'm going to let you continue, but I just wanted to share that we're all different. We all process it differently. Look, I have my time. I lay myself out in the face of God and I cry and I talk to him about this is how I feel because when he says casting your cares on me those cares it's not the fact that so and so is no longer here the care means how do I feel about them no longer being here so I need to talk to you God about how I feel that's all David did throughout the Psalms he talked that he was so real with God this is how I feel I'm mad I don't like them, take them out, <laughs> enough is enough. Why do I have to go through this? How much longer? David dealt with how he felt. And so if we deal with how we feel and our emotional struggle, casting those cares upon him, it's going to help us in the process. Remember now, it's a process. Help us in the process of healing. Pastor Michelle, I see you on too. Yes, I wanna go back to the the comment about how to support. There's someone in on Facebook who said she's afraid of overstepping or giving too much. And her way of supporting has always been humor, but that sometimes make people uncomfortable. Can you speak to that? I think- Dr. Uh, Gail, you want it? Oh, yeah, yeah sure. I, I, <laughs> I think um, again, and we've said it a couple of times, is that we got to know the person's personality. Mm -hmm. Now, see, with me, you could bring me humor, and that would be good for my soul. That, that you know, that would cause me. Uh, that, but, but for other people, they may not uh, be able to take the humor. But I was thinking about something that Apostle said um, when she was talking about about uh, uh, giving yourself grace uh, and then giving other people grace. Uh, so we have to take the time to deal with people. So if the person who said her, her way of dealing with issues is with humor, but the person that she's supporting may not be able to deal with right. that, switch it around. That's right. Switch it around and, 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 and ask the question, what are you feeling right now? Yes. How can I best serve you? Uh, Apostle said it. You might just have to leave me alone. Yeah. And that's okay. But see, if we leave somebody alone, then we feel guilty. Right. You know, but we just, if I promise you, if we know their personality. Yeah. And, and, and we see. You know, because you would love to say somebody, come on, now it's been 30 years. Uh, you know, what, what, what's going on? But the issue is they didn't deal with it from the beginning. Yes. If it had dealt with properly from yeah. the beginning. Yes. And sometimes I may not be the one. Apostle may call me if, if, if she's grieving over something or she may not call me. She may call her other friend or she may call her other friend because each one of 
Jesus has an anointing right. to deal with yes. situations and, and, and with that anointing. And we got to know, you know, sometimes we might just have to say, you know what? I'm out. I, 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 I can't. I, I'm, not, I'm not the one. Right, Apostle, you want to add to that? Yeah, you know, Brenda, Brenda has her hand up and I'm going to let her come. But I was thinking, and it's so good that you said this, and I'm grateful for that question, because I was thinking, you know, when we look at the um, uh, uh, love languages, the five love languages, right? And so some is to touch, and for some it's uh, 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 having someone around, some it's kind deeds, some it's uh, uh, buying me gifts, and others it's words, right? And so a lot of times, depending on what our love language is, we think everybody else responds to that okay. same love language the same way. So if mine is quality time and yours is touch, I'm thinking, well, look, I'm spending time with you. You should be okay. So mm -hmm. I'm saying that to say, if I am a person of humor, and Dr. Gail really did address this, but she is, when, when she gets into a place, you came, don't, don't make me laugh right now. I, I don't want to go there. I need you to hold my hand or let me lay my head on your shoulder and just let me cry. Yeah. You know, you gotta know the person. And so, and, and while humor is wonderful, I got a grandson that when tensions are going on around here, he just throws something in and everybody laughs and, you know, but that doesn't always work. People have to be able to work through it in their own way. And trust me, God has created the body to do just that. We can work through this in our own way, but it has to be a healthy way. And this is why Dr. Gus said, you can't call everybody. You got to know who to call. And this is why we avail ourselves. I, as a pastor, avail myself to my members. I, I have people that I'll be like, Dr. Gail, here, you take, you, can you do this one? Or if I can't help you, I'm going to send you to Dr. Gail because she is the she can, she can do this. And so we want to see everybody heal and everybody hold. All right, Brenda. Okay, so I did have a question from, um, this one is in reference to my niece. Okay. Um, she's the one that lost um, her dad and her mom. And she is very devastated. I mean, devastated. And she wants to know how can she move on from that? Because I, I know um, some nights she just cries a lot and she'll go in the room where they were and, you know, lay in their bed. I mean, it, you know, and, and sometimes we kind of think, you know, if she's going to be depressed, but I know she was just telling me that she, she's devastated and she wants to know how can she move on? You know, I remember again when my mom passed away and um, I have a, a friend, a college friend, been friends for 50 years and, and she had lost her mom. And she said to me one day, she said, write her a letter. I said, I really miss my mom. And she said, write her a letter. And I thought, write her a letter? And she said, yeah, she said, write her a letter, you know, tell her what you miss about her, tell her how much you love her. And I did. I mean, I sat down and I wrote my mom. My mom was the one that brought me to the Lord. I'm telling you, she prayed me into the kingdom. She literally, through drunkenness, through everything, she prayed me into the kingdom. And so she's gone. My God, who am I? She was my mentor. She was my spiritual mother. Yeah. And I wrote that letter. And I think, now tell me, Brenda, how long has it been since she lost her parents? She lost her dad in July of this year, 2021. And then a month later, she lost her mom in August. You know... She's got to have some time. Yeah. She, she's just, just got to have some time. I understand yeah. the devastation. You guys just surround her, be there, let her know. Let her know how much you love her. But you know what? I am 
probably my nieces, one of my nieces, I am probably her oldest ally. And I and, and she lost her mom a few years ago. And she and my mom were very close, but I am auntie mom. I, I've been auntie all along, but but I consider myself to be auntie mom. So so give her give her some time. You you know, whatever she needs, give her some time, give her some space but be close by. Yeah. You know, that's really the bottom line is it, it give her the space, but be close by, you know, talk to her about what her and her mom used to do together all the time uh, and engage her in conversation. Can you tell, do you think you'd be able to tell if she was going into depression? Um, well, I'm getting the message because she's here. Okay. And she is saying she is depressed. Okay. So then uh, what's her name? Her name is, well, we call her Tan. It's Tanzania, but we call her Tan. So Tan. Tan needs to see a counselor. She needs to see a therapist. She needs to, to go through the process with someone who, uh, a professional, who can help walk her through the process. She needs to be able, and she may not be able to tell all the family members, you know, what she's feeling. She may have some stuff going on inside that she don't want the family members to know. And so this is where the, the grief counseling yes. comes in. And I've got a few clients uh, that, that I have that are, are going through some, some grieving right now. But, but if she realizes that she's going into depression, um, Apostle, well, you, you can give her my number okay. uh, or I find something that. local okay. uh, that's there, whatever works. Because I'm sure she's angry. I'm yes. sure she's very angry. Absolutely. And angry with God. And, and you, you all know what? It's okay to that's just right. feel like you're angry with God. God understands. You, you haven't sinned because he understands the depth of the heart. And as you come through this, you'll realize there was no need to be angry with him after all, but he understands. So I just want to say that I think it would be very good to um, have her to speak with you, Dr. Gale, but there are some others that are local that we can have her speak with as well. It is very important, especially since she is feeling depressed mm -hmm. right now, but it is still early. And Dr. Gale said, give her the time. Mm -hmm. uh, someone asked a question. I think it was Anne. Anne asked a question. How do you help someone who's in denial? And Anne, I'm assuming in denial about the death, what, what are they? Because denial is part of the stages of grief. And I'm assuming it is maybe denial that the person is is dead, why they died, how, I'm not sure what area of denial it is, but we can go through denial. So how do we help someone who's in denial? And it depends on what they're denying. Okay. It's like you said, you know, cause the bottom line, I mean, it could be, I'm, I'm still in shock. That's that, that's, right. that, that's number not, one. Number one. That's state. number one. Although it's no real order there, that is number one. But uh, she just responded. They're in denial about grief. So they don't recognize that they're grieving, okay. I think is what she's saying. Okay. And most times when that happens, they may be in some sort of depression and don't recognize that either. It's hard to reach somebody that's in denial. Now, this is very interesting. I, um, I have a client. Um, that I, I'm kind of known for being, um, I'm, I'm no, I no longer call it harsh. I, I'm in your face. <laughs> I, I guess that's what it is. And, uh, and, and really basically uh, she said to me, you, you, you really are kind of hard. <laughs> and I said, I know. And some people you have to be in their face. Some people you can come on baby, you know, it's, right. it's going to be all right. You know, Jesus loves you. And, you know, I just said to, to um, 
my niece, I think, I mean, my cousin, I don't think she was expecting her mom to die. And I said, uh, last night when I spoke with her and her mom was still living, and I asked her, how was she feeling? And she said, it's just hard, it's, it's, it's hard to take in. And I said, I wanna tell you something about your mom. And I said, your mom touched many, many lives. And, and she was one of the first in our family that was saved. Wow. She was responsible for my mom's salvation. And my mom was an alcoholic. And she was responsible. And I went on to paint this picture for her. I said, your mom lived such a great life. I said, you know, I said, I, I can remember the, the many lives. I said, the glory of God was always there. And so that whole uh, denial thing, because some people don't believe they're going to die. You know, I, I just don't believe. And, and many people are, are like, oh, no, God's going to raise them up. You know, God's going to raise them up. They're good. Some people that are in denial, you can't reach. I have learned over the years, minister to those who want to be ministered to. Those that are in denial and saying, no, I, I, I can't even imagine someone dying and, and not having some form of grief. And if that person is saying, oh, no, it's not grief. Okay, well, then tell me what you think it is. It's not grief. It's not depression. And that's what I mean when I say I'm in your face. If it's not that, then tell you tell me what you think it is. And, and let that person say, well, I just think, you know, that I just miss them. Okay, you, you can miss them. That's a form of grief. And then, yeah. you know, if they're in denial of that grief, get that book that Apostle is recommending, Good Grief. And, yeah. and read that book and let them read that book. I mean, when that talks about, um, you know, it really does talk about all the stages that you go through. Mm -hmm. Denial is, is, is one of those things that, you know, people may go through. Yeah. So I hope that, that, that sort of answers that apostle you want to add to that. Yeah, I think that's good. You know, with that uh, good grief, by the way, Brenda, I have about 30 copies in my office. So anybody on the line, if you need a copy, if you're Brenda's family, we can get a copy to you. If you just need a copy, you're not Brenda's family. If you can get to the church, we'll get it to you. If I need to send you a copy, put it up on our website or in the chat and we'll send you a copy. I really want you to get this because it helps. Sometimes you're ready to read it. Sometimes you're not. Sometimes you read it and go like, I can't deal with this right now. It's okay because there'll come a time that you will. I want to go back and reiterate a couple of things because Dr. Gell, I don't want to just overlook this and dismiss it. When she talked about that letter, that letter is so real mm -hmm. in writing that letter. So write that letter, uh, uh, have your niece, even Tan, write that letter, but all of you, you can write a letter and you can also write a letter sometimes to just tell people that you ain't. I'm mad because you left me, mama. Why did you leave me? Mm -hmm. why, did, why did you have to go? It's okay, write it. Because what it does is it takes it from here it takes it from here and it puts it in the hand of God so that he can do something with it. The more you keep it here and you keep it here, you're holding it into yourself and you can call sickness, uh, depression and other types of physical illness up on yourself. And so I want you to make sure that you process this, write that letter, just as she talked about all of you. Some said I've written a letter and it's really helped. We could have so many conversations around this and we probably will, will at one time. Dr. Gail, Gail said something else, which is very important too. When the question came up about this person being in denial that they're in grief, in that they're grieving. Sometimes we can be in your face. Sometimes we just need to step back and pray. Father, let them come into the knowledge of the truth. Yes. They need the knowledge of the truth. There's some people you can paint it red, white, and blue, and they'll never get it. But when God does it, they will get that aha moment in his timing. Don't ever forget 
God is in this battle with you. He's fighting with, he's re, he is there. You're never in it all by yourself. All right. I think is that, is there, there might've been something else I was going to add, but I think that's very good. Uh, Pastor Michelle's on. Yes, ma'am. What would you say to the person who's the strong one, who's always there for everyone else? And then now they're the one who's grieving and in need, uh, but everyone around them is so used to them being the strong one that there's no one there for them or they feel like no one's there for them. You want it first, Gail? <laughs> you want to deal with it first? You can do it. Go ahead. Either one. It does, it's okay. You know, I, I, I think I think that is so real, okay? Um, I'm for me, I consider myself the strong one, right? Mm -hmm. Right. But because I am, there's no expectation in anybody to have to do anything for me. Although when you do, I am comforted and I am strengthened. I already said, you know, I don't, I don't like to be, you know, like babied and overwhelmed. I don't like that. However, and that's because I go to the rock. I can go, I lay out myself before the Lord and I can process and I can talk about it. But in a conversation with someone, when you give me the grace, you allow me now to say, I miss Mary. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I miss, I, I, it's, it's her birthday or it's that time of year or, you know, I'm, I miss my sister and I competing with sweet potato pies at Thanksgiving and Christmas, you know, just let me do me the way I do it, mm -hmm. right? That's how I am. So when we say somebody that's the strong one, that's always there for everyone, it all depends on, again, it depends on who they are. Because for me, I consider myself the strong one. I consider myself always there, but I have a way that I do process it because I refuse to lose it. Mm -hmm. I refuse to go into depression. I refuse. So I have to process it. I have to stay before the Lord and talk to the Lord. Now around people, it's a, I believe in being real. I don't want, I, I, I never allow people to think that you know, it really doesn't matter. Oh, I'm just fine. Everything's okay. It's, it's never just like that. I know that I'm going to get through this, but I don't need to be baby for me. I don't need to be baby through it, but I do when my time to want to talk about it, then I need somebody to talk about it with. Uh, I was telling uh, a friend of mine, I was telling Gail, Dr. Gail this a couple of weeks ago, sometimes, listen, I, I, I'm real. Sometimes I just want to, I, I miss Bishop and she's still very much alive. And, but sometimes I just want to just go and I used to just call her and I could just tell her everything and I can get some good feedback. And so, and I was telling Gail, I said, sometimes, you know, I see, I have a real friend in Dr. Gail to where she's a therapist, but she doesn't judge me. See, I need to be able to say, this is how I feel. Now I might be mad and I know I'm even wrong, but this is how I feel. And she won't judge me, but she lets me process it. Does that make sense? Sometimes we just have to let each other process things. We all, all of us, I used to tell my husband, I'm a strong woman, honey, but I need to lay my head on your chest sometimes and cry. Mm -hmm. As strong as I am, I need to lay my head on your chest and cry. I hope this answers the question. We're all different. Mm -hmm. That's me. I know there's a lot of you all that are like me and a lot of you all that are different. And it's whatever it is. But if you say you're strong, then you've got to make sure you're not behind the scenes, tipping and sipping and you know sleeping and doing all kinds of stuff. You got to be real about you. If you're strong, then you got to be real. Let's be real. Don't try to put on a facade. If you're real, if you're strong, you're strong. All right? Okay, let me stop, Dr. Gay. Before she gives her professional answer, can I give my non-professional? Sure. <laughs> I'm strong too. I'm strong. But at the same time, I have my extremely weak moments. And I'm real with myself about those moments. And I will ask the people I trust who I believe can help me in that moment, I will tell them, I, I'm not having a good day today. 
and and you know whatever my, whatever's going on i have a few people who i can just say this is what it is what i'm feeling today and they can be there for me those people might not be the same a lot of times they're not the same people who depend on you it's usually somebody else right and so who is that person mm -hmm. for you um and if it if there is no person that you feel like can be there and be that way for you then i would say you're a perfect candidate for counseling yeah because that person has to be there for you <laughs> once you secure their services they have to be there for you so if nobody close to you can be the one it's time for you to find a counselor and or either and both and both yeah and and, and both and you're absolutely right uh, michelle you're absolutely right i can remember uh, two years ago apostle was always right there for me and it's interesting my daughter was in the hospital a few months ago with COVID. i really thought she was gonna die i i i, I didn't i didn't have i had faith but i didn't know how to pull on that faith and say oh she's gonna live and not die right. i didn't have that and and but but at least once or twice a week sometimes almost every day you would just send me a text and you would say how's it going how is she today i mean in fact i remember the, the first week every single day yeah. that i can't tell you what that did for me and and for my faith i i still didn't know what was going to happen but you were there. You were there when I needed someone to talk to uh, about my husband. It was only two or three people that would even understand. Yeah. Uh, you know, most people say that they understand. Uh, uh, but then in, in answer to uh, Pastor Michelle's uh, uh, statement really is that you may need both. You, you may yeah. need both. I was looking at something about emotions and grief and and you mentioned the apostle about grief causing sickness and grief oftentimes does cause sickness it can either cause us to be weaker or it can cause us to be stronger i really am that strong person you know i remember years ago i wasn't even saved at the time and this young man said to me you're the strongest person I know. And I said, yeah, but I just want to be weak sometimes. You know, I just yeah. want somebody to stand up for me. Uh, you know, every now and then you just need somebody uh, to do that. But let me say something about emotions and, 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 and in regards to grief. Emotions get stuck. And when an emotion is not fully processed and grief, this one of those emotions yeah when it's not fully processed it gets stuck in the body yeah and uh it gets stuck it's the limbic structure the limbic structure here uh -huh. in the brain uh where emotional processing occurs and sometimes you just have to put your hand on your brain and say be healed in my yeah. emotion because we don't understand uh the depth of emotions and how critical they are on our physical body the thing that we've got to understand is that this whole body one it's a physical body but also it's the temple of god yes and if we get that that it's the temple of god but everything we do has some kind of effect on the body because when you consider that trauma settles in the C7 section right along here at the nape of the neck and wow. trauma can settle in there. And that goes down through the vertebral column, which all of everything else, all the muscles, the blood and all that stuff flows through the body. And so when we allow stuff to fester or get stuck, you know, anger, affects the liver uh, it affects the heart it affects our internal our adrenal organs 
uh, all of that stuff that anger does. And one last thing I'll say when we're talking about the letter, talking about writing the letter to the loved one, the one that's passed on, write a letter to God also. You know, tell God, God, I'm angry. I, I know I'm not supposed to be angry or, 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 or I don't know I'm not supposed to be angry. I'm angry with you. You took my mama, you took my daddy, you know, I don't understand this. You left me here. I am angry and I need to be able to process this. So I just need you to know when the Lord said to me about my daughter once, he said, I, I said, God, I'm not understanding why you're doing this to me. I mean, she was a drug addict. God, I don't understand why you're doing this to me. This 30 something years ago. And he, first of all, he said, it's not about you. Yeah. And he then said, he said, uh, she's an addict. Well, I thought I understood addiction. He said, she is an addict. And I said, yeah, no. And he said, no, she is an addict. That's the first time I really began to understand wow. what an addict was. Wow. Because, you know, I mean, I smoked weed all the time. So I thought I was an addict. I didn't realize I was just an abuser. Yeah. You know, and when he said yeah. to me, she's an addict. Yeah. And then another time I'm, I'm raising her children. And I said, God, I don't understand. And he said to me, she's depressed. And I said, yeah, I know she's depressed. He said, no, she is depressed. I begin to understand depression. Yeah. I stopped telling people, get yourself together. Because I realized they didn't know how. Right. They just didn't. Right. Know. You know, life is so, so precious and we treat it so trivial. Ugh. We, you know, when these things come up, we just think we just, you know, and, and, and that's it. But we've got to deal with the person that was talking about someone being in denial. Leave them alone, like, like Apostle said. Eventually, I mean, Holy Spirit, y'all, you know, I was working one day and was saying some negative words about somebody and check this out. I felt, I, I, I felt this and I turned around, there was nobody there. Holy Spirit done tapped me on my shoulder physically, <laughs> physically yeah. and said, shut up. You got this. So Holy Spirit can deal with every situation. Now we also, and this would be for another session, is that we need to talk about the person who's not a believer. How do we deal with that That's person? Right. That's you right. Because you don't want to hear nothing about, oh, God got this. That's so true. That is so true. You know, I really believe that God is bringing them all in. I, I tell you, he is, I believe that situations are being created for those that are not believers, mm -hmm. that if we take the opportunity that we're able, right at that moment, that we have an inroad. I just had this situation with a, someone that I love very dearly. And as a child, they knew the Lord and then they just decided to do their own thing, got introduced to Muslim and all sorts of stuff. And then got really sick over this past week in the hospital and I called and prayed. And when I called and prayed initially, you know, the television, the volume on their television, you know, you could hear it. It's on the little contraption. And so I could hear it and I kept on praying and I just kept going through. And soon, pretty soon he turned it down and he listened and he was mm -hmm. right there when I prayed. The next day he was released from the hospital and he texted me and said, thank you so much for praying for me. And I was able to be that witness to him about the greatness of God and the glory of God. And so I do believe that, that God is opening doors. It, it, there's so many opportunities that I've had even on the past, over the past few months to when there was an open door to really witness to young men, to people that really don't even think about God, to, to get them saved, to uh, teach them who the Lord is. And it has just been amazing. So I really believe God is opening that door. I think this has been a phenomenal session and I am so 
grateful to God for you, Dr. Gail. And, and I, what I love about this is that we're able to be real. Mm -hmm. I like just being real. We're able to share and there is not, there is no condemnation. There's no criticizing. It's just about let's be real. And uh, I, I think that we have experienced much in life and we have a true heart and concern for people. And that's why I'm so grateful uh, that, that all of you have joined us and that Dr. Gail is with us. I'm so grateful, Dr. Gail, that you are my friend. Um, I have so many on the line that said, I'm getting ready to write the letter. I'm writing my letter right now. I do it, you know, process it. I remember, I'm gonna say this very quickly, uh, when uh, my first days at probably at Center of Hope and I was really praying and I really, my first days, meaning within that first six months to a year, and I just wanted to be whole. I just wanted to be better. And so I was angry with my dad. I was getting delivered from uh, rejection. And I was angry with my dad and didn't even realize it. But as I was praying, the Lord showed me my dad had been dead for years. I couldn't say anything to him. So in prayer, I began to talk to the Lord about how I felt about my father and talk to my dad and say, I forgive you and I release you. And I got my healing and I got my deliverance. One of the most important things, even as Dr. Gail was saying, how all these various areas in our bodies are affected by grief, by depression and all these different things. You know, we talked about this over the last couple of weeks regarding healing that anger can do so much. Anger can even cause arthritis. And so many things that we carry in our spirits are affecting us physically. And so even as we close tonight, I want Dr. Gail, I want you to pray for those. Listen, don't forget her book, The Whole Soul. We should have it on Amazon. We may have a couple of copies at the church that you can purchase but I believe also on Amazon and we will put a link to our website so that you can purchase. It is a phenomenal book. Uh, uh, Chuck Pierce is now promoting it as well. She read the whole soul, rescripting your life for personal transformation. She breaks down all these different compartments of the brain. I can't even get it. I just know if she say, put your hand here and declare this, that's what you need to do because it works. I want to tell you it works. And, uh, but she deals with the whole soul and it is scriptural. And so I'm so grateful to God again for her. Thank you all for joining. You can always reach out to me uh, and we can get some direction. Uh, if we need to go to Dr. Gail, if some, we may, may be able to counsel you through and work with you through some of these things. We have some wonderful grief counselors at the church as well. We usually do this in the ministry about this time of year we have classes. And so always remember, you're not alone. It's no competition on how we grieve. We don't have to compete with anybody else. You're not crazy because you grieve the way you grieve. Just do you. And your whole purpose through this is so that I'm going to get whole. I want to say to Tan, always remember this, that you still have life. And your mother and father would say, Tan, you've got to live. You've got to do this. Mm -hmm. You still have purpose. So you're going to come through this baby. And after this, you're going to still walk and fulfill your purpose. You'll never forget mom. You'll never forget dad. They were an intricate part of your life. It's because of them that you're here. Grieve, go through this process. Let's get you some healing. Let's get you someone to work with, Dr. Gail or whoever it may be. And then know ultimately, it's not going to be like this always. Ultimately, you're going to live again you're going to live again. And I say that to each and every one of you. You may not see it right now, but you shall live again. Amen. Dr. Gail, I put it back into your hands to close us out. I just bless each and every one. I want her to pray over us as we close out this session. This was phenomenal. And I want to do this again. We're going to do some more. I love, I love these sessions we have with my friend. I love it. And I love you all. God bless you, Dr. Gail. Amen. Uh, before I pray, I just want to say a couple of things about preparation for death. Do an advanced directive. Do a living will. Do what you would like. Write down what you would like your service to be about. I've told all my family members, 
I don't want a whole bunch of stuff. I just want folks to remember that she touched some lives. Yes. You know? But but make preparation, do the practical things. Yeah. That helps you to have reality about death because yeah. death is real. Death is imminent. It is coming unless we all get raptured up at the same time. <laughs> but 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 prepare, let your loved ones, make sure you've got an insurance policy where your loved ones don't have to do a GoFundMe page to get money just to bury you. Make sure that you just start putting things in place, that everything is in place. So when that day comes, and it's you, I got an insurance policy on all five of my grandchildren. Yeah. They don't even know it. But 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 just to make sure that nobody, you know, death is not the time that we need to be worried and concerned about financial matters. Right. We need to know everything is taken care. My mom cried a couple of days before she died. And I said, why are you crying? And she said, I don't think I have enough insurance um, for everything. And I said, mom, that is not your concern. Her insurance policy covered everything down to the very last penny. Yes. That we didn't have to be concerned. And so an advanced directive is important. Uh, the people need to know if you go to the hospital, whether you want to be resuscitated or whether if your heart stops to leave it alone. I remember a friend of mine was dying and we were all at the hospital rebuking death. In the name of Jesus, death, we call you out and we send you to the pit of hell and you you know, it's amazing how we send uh, demonic structures to the pit of hell and say to the enemy, we sending you back where you came from. We sending you from the pit of hell. He didn't come from hell. He came right. from heaven. And, <laughs> and so, you know, we need to, 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 to understand right. death is real. Yeah. Yeah. And so, Father, yeah. I thank you, God. Dr. Gale, before you start, let me just yeah. say this very quickly. We did a session in July. We, we, we do, um, you talk about the whole soul, but and we know God is concerned about the total man. So in July, we actually had an attorney on that presented on how to prepare your will and Next. your living will, your living trust, uh, all of those things that you just spoke about. I told my siblings, even to take it a step further, why don't we all write our own obituary? Absolutely. So you know stuff. I know stuff that you don't know about me. But my older sister was 13 years older than me. I didn't know anything about her younger days. Mm -hmm. So I had no input in her younger days. In her older days, I did, but not in the younger days. So you're absolutely right. We believe we have uh, people on to help with insurance. Though it can be affordable, what's needed, what's not. We do investments. We do refis and home ownership. The total man is what Jesus is concerned about. So you're absolutely right. And we may do another session on that, but we do need to prepare. We should have some kind of policy. And if you got a policy through your job, it's not enough. Mm -hmm. Because if you lose that job, your policy has gone. Mm -hmm. You need to get an outside insurance policy. So there's so much more. We could be on that one all night long too. But now you go ahead and close us out. Thank you. God bless all of you. And my niece and I said, we were going, I said, let's write our obituaries now. And she said, and I might lie a little bit on my obituary. And I thought, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, she said, I might tell them how much people loved me and, and everything, but you're so right. We, we, we must take care of the practical things. God, I thank you for teaching us how to take care of the practical things. Yes. Father, I pray for everyone that's listening in uh, tonight or that will even hear the recording, those that are grieving, those that are in mourning, those that have lost loved ones. And I especially pray for Apostle Cynthia uh, pastoring a church and, and losing members is not easy. Um, you know, being able to, to do the services is not always easy, particularly 
if there is a close bond there. And so, Father, I thank you that she is strong. I thank you, Father, that you continue uh, to strengthen her, Father, strengthen her in her inner man, Father, strengthen her in her core, uh, Lord, that she would be able to continue doing the work that she, she is doing. And so, Lord, just comfort every one of those. Your word says that you comfort those that mourn. Allow them to feel your comfort. Yes. God, allow them to feel the peace that far surpasses all understanding. All understanding. Allow them to feel that. Allow them, God, to know that death isn't the final act. Yes. It is just the beginning. Yes. It is just the beginning. And though we say they're in a better place, it by far is the most better place I could even ever think about. Yeah, it yes. is a better place. When I think yes. about being there with the cloud of witnesses, being there with all the loved ones, yes. being with the angels, being there in the presence of Father, in the presence of Jesus, yeah. you can be in a better place. Yes. And for those of you that are grieving, grieve, do whatever is necessary, whatever is necessary yes. to keep your faith and to move forward. Don't let that grief get stuck in your body because you don't want to get sick. And, and, and you may get weaker or you may get stronger, but the bottom line is this, God is always with you. I'll leave you with that. God, Holy Spirit, is always with you in Jesus' name. But before we go, there's a, another comment that I just don't want to leave without it being addressed. If you've been actually diagnosed and there may be medication involved, and you're a Christian and there's that inner conflict because you're supposed to be a Christian, and you shouldn't have to have this clinical diagnosis. How do you deal with that? And at some point, do you come off of the medications or how do you go through all of that? I tell my clients, particularly those that have high anxiety, um, that's real depressed, sometimes you need medication. I don't, I'm not a, 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 a proponent of drugs, but sometimes you need it. I can't even deal with a real high, strong person all the way up here because there's so much going on for an anxiety person in their brain that I need everything to calm down in order for me to be able to talk to them, for them to even be able to understand me. I tell them, if you have to get on medication for three months, do it. If you, if it, if it requires six months for some people, they may be on medication forever. Some people are schizophrenic that requires a prolonged medication. Bipolar people that requires a prolonged medication. If a person is grieving and they find themselves in depression, you might need something just to help you get a grip. You don't have to be on it forever. So again, I'm not a proponent of medication, but we have this idea in our mind. See, we used to believe that Christians weren't supposed to be depressed. We used to believe that Christians are not supposed to have anxiety, but there's something about when the Bible talks about be ye anxious for nothing, that means that somebody was anxious. And so as Christians, we got to stop believing that we're not supposed to do all this. We're not supposed to have any of that because it's real and it's out there. But there are ways that we can deal with it. And we just have to get with the right person to give us the right counsel. Because see, some people will say, no, you don't need none of that medication. Throw that stuff away. Well, I do believe in throwing it away. But use it first to see if it can calm you down. 
Yeah. Held her away at the right time. You know, and she's identified because some things are chemically imbalanced. So sometimes you can have a chemical imbalance and you need medication in order to that this chemical body. You take high, high blood pressure medication to bring your, regulate your blood pressure. So you got to regulate that chemical imbalance. And I do agree that sometimes you may need some anti-anxiety medications and things like that. We've had a couple of people in our ministry. In fact, years ago, there was one young woman, she came in, she was on depression, medication for depression. But after being in the presence of God and working through things, she was able to get off. And mm -hmm. I had no idea she was even on until she said, I just want you to know, I don't have to take the medication anymore. Mm -hmm. I tell you, if you've got to take it for as a, through the process, take it. Amen. I agree with Dr. Gale. If you, if you got a, a real bad ache and the doctor prescribes you pain medication, you're going to take it. You're going to take a Tylenol for your headache until you can pray it through. It's okay. Well, I think sometimes we can get super religious and mm -hmm. we need to stop being super religious and be real. Last thing, Jesus, what did he do? He used the natural things as well as the things of the spirit. How so? Remember the man who was blind. He spat into the dirt, put made mm -hmm. mud and put it on his eyes. He used the natural things mm -hmm. as well as the spiritual to bring healing. God gives doctors wisdom. And there's a reason that we have these medications. Mm -hmm. And so we just don't want to get to a place where we abuse it. That's what you got to watch out for. But I agree wholeheartedly. Mm -hmm. All right. This was wonderful. This was wonderful. Listen, uh, I, I did want to say this. So I'm kind of glad we waited a minute. One of the things that I'm raising my grandchildren, whose mother passed about six years ago. And uh, one of the things that we do, we have a memory box. And so they can write notes and put it in a memory box. Birthdays and Mother Days, we get balloons and they re we release balloons. And it just helps them to stay connected, to know that mom was here. We appreciate you, Lord, for bringing her here, letting her be in our lives. And so we still acknowledge her existence. You don't ever forget them. Mm -hmm. And I don't want them to forget their mother. So don't you, you'll never forget your loved one. So don't ever think you will. They'll yeah. always be a part, but use a time to remember them sometimes. Just remember them. Yes. All right. Thank you, Dr. Gail. Thank God bless you. you all. God bless you all. Hey, baby.